Welcome to this week's Engineering Ignition podcast with myself, Scott Buchanan. Thank you for taking the time to tune in, and I do hope you get to enjoy this week's show. This week, I'm delighted to be joined by Rosa Stewart, who's presently the Head of External Relations at Energy Supplier SSE and is the founder of the Spinning Reserve Project. I'm grateful for Rosa taking the time to join me today to discuss our latest hot topic. Rosa has been working in a dynamic environment across her um, significant career, let's call it at least 10 years um, across the energy sector, um, covering a variety of different angles, including commercial, policy, um, and legal environments, um, from major energy organisations to the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy for the UK government. And in in light of the the present uh, COVID-19 working challenges, I truly believe there is no better person to talk through our hot topic of how to start, how a startup incubator, or in this case, a spinning reserve project, will help tackle climate change and green recovery following um, COVID-19. Rosa is the the founder of the, the, the spinning reserve project, as I mentioned. Um, which has been formed to create more low-carbon business ideas and innovation. And um, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Rosa to the show. How, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, Scott. Yes, I'm very good. Thanks for having me on this podcast. You are more than welcome, and, and I'm very grateful for your time. Um, I know you're a, you're a busy lady, and you've always got something on the go. So um, I do I do appreciate it. Um, and t- today we're we're talking. Um, I, about a particular angle that's become very relevant um, at the moment, which is you, you've you've decided to set up a new business that's amalgamating a few businesses together. Is that the case? What, what, what have you been up to? What's going on? Yes, yeah, Scott. So that's right. So I, I uh, have started um, a new social business, uh, which is called the Spinning Reserve Project. Um, and uh, the idea is simply to create um, a startup uh, incubator or accelerator um, to attract um, people from the energy sector who have been furloughed or who have uh, lost their jobs, are unemployed um, as a result of COVID-19, um, and to use the talents and skills of those people um, to create more low carbon ideas and and innovation and uh, business projects and so social businesses or commercial businesses. So so my my idea is really about tapping into the talents of other people um, who are underutilized um, and creating something more um, more out of it for them to have a platform uh, to work on their ideas. That's incredible. What what a good idea. And um, is that aimed at a particular, I mean, could that be, is that just for the, the worker? Is it for the engineer? Or is it for, is there a particular talent base that you're, you're thinking is, is good for it? Um, it, it could be um, anyone, really. And, um, uh, and just to uh, give a bit more context, so the name, the, the spinning reserve, so uh, that's uh, a more of an uh, uh, engineering term. It comes from the sort of uh, power sector um, concept of the spinning reserve, which is having uh, power stations who are online, the turbines are spinning, uh, and they've got e- extra capacity. So if um, if National Grid needs extra capacity, the power stations are there to create and offer more output. And so the idea here is that at the moment we have lots of underutilized workers from the energy sector uh, who've got extra capacity. So it's sort of a spinning reserve of a human kind uh, where people are sitting online in their living rooms and have ideas and, and power to offer to the system. Um, and and it could be engineers, it could be lawyers, it could be um, you know pricing uh, analysts, commercial people comms professionals, uh, technology, software developers, um, anyone really. Um, and there is no limit in, in who um, has the potential or innovation. And actually, um, more innovation comes out of situations where people aren't boxed into, um, you know, you used to be a lawyer or an engineer or, a, uh, or an accountant, and that's now everything you're ever going to be. So, so it is for everyone. Uh, but the uniting theme is the, the low carbon um, uh, you know the decarbonisation challenge, it, uh, and obviously, you know we're in the middle of climate crisis, so we can't afford to have talented people sit at home doing nothing. 
um, you know, it's not good for them and their well-being and mental health space. It's also a waste of um, talent and resource. It's it's an incredible idea, Rosa, I must say. So, you know, you, you have identified there's a talent base in there that's sitting there. There's also the, you know, the 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 um, the carbon um, mandate that we've all signed up to, I guess, and actually helping, you know, it, it goes full circle and, and the spinning reserve nature, as you've, you've just said. Great idea. Yeah. So g- g- more, so how, how have you come to this position then, Rosa? Why are you, why, you know, doing the role you're doing, you've got plenty going on, I have no doubt. What, what was your inspiration, I guess, for this? Where, where did the idea come from? Well, um, it's, it's sort of me having traveled my way around the energy sector that has led me to kind of pick up the various bits that have finally formed this this idea in my head um, and one, one of the um, angles is the, um, the climate challenge and the innovation challenge as you mentioned uh, I worked at the um, uh, department uh, for business energy industrial um, strategy and I was a um, deputy director uh, in charge of uh, the clean growth and climate change portfolio. So that's our, um, you know, net zero uh, target, our carbon budgets, uh, which are all about how we reduce emissions uh, across the economy. Uh, and I also worked on the um, industrial strategy side, which was about um, growing the UK's low carbon uh, economy and uh, supporting the government's clean growth grand challenge, which is about all these new business ideas. So, so, um, so I had my professional background in sort of energy and climate change and the kind of low carbon um, innovation and growth. Uh, that's a, sort of a key part that I've been doing. But what really motivated me uh, to start this project was the human angle, um, and it was just the, the feeling of empathy towards people who are sat at home having lost their jobs. Um, And I have been in that situation in the past, um, as I'm sure many people listening to this podcast are. are. And, um, you know, it's not a nice feeling when when you've um, got energy and enthusiasm and you want to, um, you know, contribute to the world, uh, but but you're stuck at home and and can't have that job or, or the project. Um, and obviously now that it's worse than it's ever been because not only are people at home, but they also can't go anywhere. Um, and at the time of speaking, we're, we're under lockdown across the country. And obviously, you know, that may be lifted, but I think uh, life isn't going to return to normal anytime soon. And people don't have the same, you know, having, you know, it used to be that um, redundancy was a, a great option for many people because they thought they're going to take a sabbatical and they go travel and sit on a beach and uh, learn a new language or, or, or do something. But suddenly, you know, we may be limited to bubbles of 10 people if we're lucky and less, less if we're unlucky. And, um, and therefore, it's more about um, coming up with ideas that people can do to grow and learn new skills and use their existing skills, make new connections um, and do that maybe even, you know, from their homes, but still collaborating across people from different locations. It, it, absolutely. And, and I do think actually if, reading between the lines of, yes, we're in interesting times, this and this, um, the COVID-19 scenario that we're all in presently is going to change the world. It has changed the world. It's going to change how we operate. Um, it's going to change, you know, the, our, our employment status, I guess, in some cases as well. Um, so the world is naturally going to change. So what you're actually doing, whether you realise this or not, Rosa, you're actually proactively doing ahead of the game what probably and is likely to happen, um, which which is which is incredible. Um, are, are you? Clearly, we're at very, very early stages here as, as I talk to you. Um, I mean, what, what type of buy-in have, have we had from, from other, I don't know, other companies, I guess, or individuals? And, and what kind of volume of, 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 of availability of talent is there? I mean, what, what are you seeing? Mm. So it is really early stages. So this project has obviously only started during the, the COVID crisis, uh, while I, I've been um uh, working from home and have suddenly more, more time to uh, even more time to think new ideas than I had before. Um, uh, the 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 talent pool at the moment that we're talking about, um, I am aware of at least uh, twelve thousand people from 
energy sector who've been furloughed, um, that must be just the tip of the iceberg because that's listing big companies who've made public announcements, uh, you know, doesn't account for small companies um, who, whose data will be hidden. Um, and obviously, as the crisis continues, uh, you know, we don't know uh, how, how the furlough numbers and any redundancy numbers are going to go. Um, but it's it's going to be thousands of people out there um, who could um, be interested or eligible um, to participate. Um, and I've had lots of uh, support and um, people reaching out, out to me across the energy sector um, to offer various skills in terms of uh, setting up or mentoring or coaching and, and other forms of support. But it, it is really early stage and what I'm hoping um, that we could do a cross energy sector project, um, that it wouldn't be um, just the one or two companies, but the many, many companies would uh, lend their hands um, and benefit from, from the project. And so um, I, I'm really glad to be on this podcast to, to actually to be able to ask for help from anyone who is listening. Um, and uh, I am looking for help in terms of advertising the project uh, to your workforce, if you have furloughed uh, staff or uh, people who you've made redundant, I'm looking for a help to for you to share the details um, of the project with them. Uh, I'm looking for uh, mentors and coaches uh, from any companies uh, who um, have uh, volunteering capacity who could help the uh, participants develop their project ideas. Um, I'm also in talks. Um, with uh, a few organizations who deal with um, startups and SMEs themselves, whether they could match their databases to uh, um, kind of participants on the startup incubator so we could maybe turbocharge some of the existing startups that are already, um, you know, um, further along the route and could do with extra skills. Um, I'm looking for companies who may want to offer funding for the startups, so who may want to have their own, you know, Dragon's Den moments where, you know, people could go and pitch to them uh, with ideas, so funders, um, anyone really who's already maybe running something similar, there's various energy companies who've got um, startup programs, um, like recruitment agencies like, uh, like yourselves, um, who talk to people who are unemployed and may, may spot an opportunity. And so really there, there is no, no limit. And I almost hope that, um, that, you know, that there will be someone unexpected who will listen to this podcast and come forward. And that may be a, a, a new, you know, catalyst uh, for the project. Yeah, no. And I think having spoken to you over the, over the course recently, I think one of the, the things about this project that really impresses me is it's op it's it works for everyone or should work for everyone whereby it doesn't really matter whether you're a, a major utilities company or you're the SME that's got one or two employees that's that's got that idea and trying to bring it through um having you know done done this job for a very long time that the, the biggest challenge is sometimes getting the SME through to you know to, through to becoming a real company and and actually what what this should allow you know people to to have the opportunity in doing is actually have the expertise of potentially someone from that bigger company that actually knows the route how to get that idea mm -hmm. through um, and then doing it in a, a sensible way all for the the greater good of of this net zero um, carbon emission um, in, in the future. So um, I think just now is probably a good point to raise, and, and, and I do highlight it is the early, early stages, but there'll be developments on uh, Rosa's website. Um, Rosa, do you want to give the, the address out? Yeah, sure. So the, the project website will be uh, spinningreserve.org, um, where we'll um, set up a, a sign-up um, function for for uh, participants and others to to sign up and then share further news um, as the project develops. Super, and and I guess in principle, and again, I appreciate this is early stages. Uh, you know, so someone will register, someone will highlight their details or background, I guess, in some shape or form. What what's the plan and in, in principle, I guess, of of making it all happen? How do, how will it work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the idea is that we um, sign up people. Uh, who are interested in participating from the furloughed and unemployed um, workforce. 
then there will be um, a sort of um, matching process um, where um, people uh, are able to share the, the ideas that they want to work on or the, the skills that they bring to the table um, to form groups. Um, so th there may be people who join us as groups, but there are probably lots of people who join individually, given people are all, you know, locked down in their, in their homes. And so we will help facilitate forming teams. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, earlier, we'll help match people to existing maybe startups or SMEs who, who, who've got a bit further. Um, to help bolster those. Um, then uh, we're looking to do um, tools to support people, project formation and our business plan development, matching to funding sources like the you know, UK, Innovate UK, um, innovation funding, government startup funding, um, local authorities, other energy companies. So, so highlighting people to tools and support. Um, and uh, ideally creating a sort of an online uh, platform to facilitate collaboration so people can see what projects others are working on and where they may be able to hop across to help someone else uh, because you know this is all virtual we can't get mm -hmm. people into one place um, and then um, the next stage would be um, up their ideas then it's the, the opportunity to pitch them to companies who've expressed interest um, and to, to secure funding, so you know, from private and public sources, um, and so that's the broad concept. Uh, and uh, I'm sure it, it will um, develop in in different ways based on the interest out there and uh, the the kind of offers from various companies who come forward um, as well. Absolutely, and it sounds like so. You the, the plan is, I guess, to use yes the 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 new idea and that whole piece together, but also using I guess existing funding that is presently sitting there that maybe hasn't been identified hasn't been utilized either um, that people maybe just aren't aware of as well that, that could actually help yeah absolutely super and and I guess looking at this just now I mean we're talking what we're just you know I guess June of 2020 here I mean what what, what would we see as a what would you see as a measurement of success I mean what what's the what, 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 what's the ambition of, of your company, do you think, Rosa? Oh, that, that's a really um, interesting question because I, I started off um, thinking that I would be happy if I um, found a, a one person who is currently unemployed or furloughed and I could make that one person feel better about themselves and give them more um, motivation to, to do something while, while they're um, under lockdown. And so that was, that was and is, I suppose, my sort of minimum success metric. If I made one person happier, um, that, that is good enough for me. Um, at the same time, I, I don't um, shy away from the idea that this could be a, a, a massive um, cross-sector, um, cross-economy uh, um, project uh, with, uh, you know, um, thousands of people going, going through it. Um, and so uh, I am up for as much ambition as uh, I get response from um, from the uh, outside world, um, and uh, and I think co collectively we can we can do um, big things and, and change uh, change the world better for for the people as well as the environment. No, I, I totally believe that, and, and already I mean I've I've certainly been mentioning your idea in the background to some some um, some key leaders. And they are absolutely think it's a great idea, um, and I, I think this may well snowball, and I, I really do hope it, it does as well because it's 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 a common goal for everybody, um, and hopefully bring yeah. some some good ideas into the world. So excellent. So look, th thank you again for taking the time to talk with me. Um, and for, for joining me and um, especially, I guess, announcing this on, on the podcast. Um, it's a great idea and I can see um, you, you helping and help the, the business itself going full circle. Um, and I wish you all the best um, in the future. Going forward, Rosa, I'm, I guess I'm putting the spot here. Um, I think having thought this through as we've been talking it's maybe prudent that we could do a maybe an update every so often over the course would you would you be interested in doing that 
Oh, uh, absolutely. I think it would be brilliant. I, I think this is one of those scenarios where it will change, it will evolve. There'll be certain areas that you might need additional expertise in. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's important and it's what a good cause and I wish you all the success with it. Okay. Thank you so you, much. You're Scott. welcome. So thank you for taking the time to listen. And I look forward to our next episode of our Experts and Leaders series of the Engineering Ignition podcast in the very near future.